we have been talking about um, a spin hall effect uh, which arises uh, because of the uh, passage of uh, charge current. So, there is a charge current which uh, causes um, uh, the spins to segregate at uh, the you know the transverse edges of the sample uh, which will constitute a spin current and um, uh, this happens uh, not in the presence of an external magnetic field rather there is a requirement of uh, spin orbit coupling and uh, we have discussed spin orbit coupling and in particular it in two dimensional material or rather low dimensional material because of the lack of inversion symmetry uh, a kind of uh, particular kind of uh, spin orbit coupling is important uh, which is called as a Rashba spin orbit coupling we have uh, discussed that as well. So, uh, let us discuss uh, the spin current which is at the heart of these uh, spintronic devices and this if the spin current is large at least that is what the attempt is in terms of experiments so that uh, fabrication of devices can be made. So, um, uh, the spin current is actually uh, different than the charge current uh, it has different properties than the charge current and um, uh, because it is you know central to the study of spin hall effect. Uh, uh, we need to understand uh, what these properties are and how different they are from the charge the usual current that we refer to which is the charge current. So, uh, just to remind you that the charge current has a form uh, well known in quantum mechanics it is j let us write it with an electron because it is the charge degree of freedom this is equal to the real part of uh, psi uh, r t. Uh, dagger and uh, E v where E is the electronic charge and V is the velocity and this is psi r t where psi r t is the wave function. If you remember that it has a form which is psi dagger I mean psi star del psi minus psi del psi star this can be written in a simplified form like this and um, uh, this uh, current the charge current obeys the continuity equation which is given by uh, d rho uh, I am just putting this electron just to uh, talk about the charge and this plus a divergence of j electron this is equal to 0 and this is called as a continuity equation. And uh, the continuity equation confirms that there is a conservation of charge or invariance of charge. So, this is conservation of charge. as opposed to that spins are not conserved quantities. Okay. And this is an important statement uh, and this happens because in most of these materials that we are talking about at least now they have a spin orbit coupling and in presence of spin orbit coupling the components of S are no longer uh, good quantum numbers which is what we have seen. For example, if you have L dot S then uh, this uh, spins are not good quantum numbers. And uh, not only that uh, there is another property which is distinct as compared to the uh, for the spin current which is different than the charge current is that the charge current changes sign under time reversal that is as time is reversed. So, j goes to minus j as uh, t goes to minus t and the reason is that uh, because j is equal to say e into v velocity, velocity uh, changes sign under the time reversal operation. So, this is for the electron. However, j s does not change sign uh, as a t tends to minus t. Okay. So, this is a very important thing and this is related to the fact that uh, this uh, spin current they can actually propagate uh, without any dissipation. And uh, if you want to understand it in a simple language that how a time reversal invariance breaking term gives rise to dissipation then you can understand it if you write down the Hamiltonian for uh, say harmonic oscillators a p square by 2 m 
plus half k x square. So, this is the uh, oscillator that we all know. This has a time reversal invariance as t changes to minus t and none of these terms change uh, sign. However, if say for example, a dissipative term which I write it as uh, alpha into velocity which is x dot uh, now this changes sign um, as uh, t tends to minus t. Okay. So, that tells you that uh, a dissipative term or a term which uh, changes sign uh, as t tends to minus t actually is dissipative. So, that is why the charge current is dissipative because uh, it is odd under time reversal whereas, uh, the spin current is uh, non dissipative uh, because of the time reversal invariance that it maintains. Okay. So, uh, how do I uh, write the spin current? So, the spin current is written as, uh, as I said that we will write it with a j s and uh, this is written with a real part a pretty similar fashion as earlier it is a uh, r t and this is equal to a v dot s okay, and psi of r t. In fact, this is uh, one of the ways that you can understand that this term is invariant under time reversal uh, because both v and s would uh, change their signs and the, so the product would not change signs and that is how it is uh, uh, invariant under time reversal. So, this is the form of uh, the spin current and um, one can uh, you know write it as components. So, this uh, real part can be written as uh, the inside the real part we can write it as a psi dagger. I am not uh, writing this uh, R and T dependence which in general it would uh, depend upon this R and T and this is equal to a V uh, alpha and a S beta and a psi uh, this is equal to real part of a psi dagger S alpha V beta uh, psi. Okay. So, you can write it as V alpha S beta which is same as um, S alpha that is alpha component. So, alpha and beta are the components x, y and z. Okay. So, these are just components and so on. So, this is the current density. So, this is uh, the spin current density is written as this and uh, one can write down the spin current which uh, is equal to say uh, d a where A is some area over which this current is being considered and uh, this is like uh, so some component and then J s um, R t. Uh, so, J is also a function of R and t which we can write it as a d A uh, and then a psi dagger R t and uh, so we can write as half of v dot s uh, plus s dot v uh, and this comes from the uh, step above where uh, this is equal to this. So, uh, we write the v dot s terms as half of v dot s plus s dot v and then psi of r t. Now, that brings in an anti commutator and this uh, can be written as uh, so this uh, j s alpha beta can be written as um, this half of uh, v dot s plus uh, s dot v. Um, so, this is the, the current operator and uh, if you use this um, s equal to uh, h cross over 2 sigma where uh, sigma denotes the Pauli matrices in that case we can write this as the j s alpha beta is equal to a 1 over 4 I have taken h cross equal to 1 um, and this is a sigma alpha and a phi beta com anti commutator. So, this is an anti commutator. So, you know what an anti commutator is it is basically given by say you have a a b and the anti commutator of that is equal to a b plus b a a commutator will have a minus sign here. Okay. All right. So, this is the form and uh, where we have taken h cross equal to 1. Uh, 
So, this is the form of the uh, spin current and its components and so on. And um, uh, let us take uh, a particular example. This is a example say for example, uh, where we take uh, alpha equal to z and beta equal to y. It's just some examples that we want to give in which your v y which is obtained from the Hamilton's equation as del h del p y that is your v y and if you uh, consider a Hamiltonian uh, which is equal to p square over 2 m uh, minus lambda. So, this is that uh, Rashba. So, we just put a r here just to make sure that it is a Rashba spin orbit coupling. So, it is sigma dot uh, z cap cross p um, and uh, where we have taken again h cross equal to 1 without any uh, loss of generality we can one can put it back. So, suppose this is the Hamiltonian this is the kinetic energy just the free electron kinetic energy and this is the Rajpa spin orbit coupling. Okay. And in that case I can calculate this del h del p y in order to get the v y the y component of the velocity. So, v y becomes equal to p y over m uh, plus a lambda r uh, sigma x okay. because this is equal to sigma x p y minus sigma y p x and uh, the other term will give you 0 when you take a derivative with respect to p y and that tells you that the spin current has this form which is uh, y z uh, that is equal to um, it is equal to 1 over 2 m and a sigma z p y. Okay. This is quite an important step in the sense that this is uh, written the spin current is written in terms of the Pauli matrix and the p y the y component of the momentum and uh, suppose you want to put it in the Kubo formula in order to calculate the Hall conductance or the longitudinal conductance. Uh, these are the quantities that are going to be you know used uh, and they have to be taken the expectation values of these terms have to be taken within the states of the Hamiltonian and the Hamiltonian appears here. Okay. So, once you solve the Hamiltonian you get the uh, eigenstates and uh, these uh, j's have to be the expectation values of jx and jy etcetera etcetera will have to be taken between these states and then one can calculate the Hall conductivity or the longitudinal conductivity. Basically the conductance formula using the Kubo formula. So, just like um, an electric current it produces a magnetic field uh, a pure spin current also uh, induces or uh, an electric field okay. and this is quite an important thing. So, a spin current actually creates or produces uh, an electric field and uh, basically the spin current actually experiences a force because of this electric field uh, just like uh, a magnetic field uh, or rather than electric current. induces a magnetic field a spin current induces an electric field. Okay. So, this tells you that if there is a spin current uh, in an electric field induced by itself it experiences a force and the force is given by is j s cross e. Just like we know that the this electric field experiences a force which is j cross b. So, this is because of the magnetic field and um, uh, this uh, force even though it is small it produces observable effects in a system in terms of course, the uh, renormalizing the spin current etcetera and also it produces a sort of effect called at the uh, Zitter-Bugung 
zeta uh, b w e which is called as the jittery motion of the electrons. Okay. So, it uh, has observable effects and so on. Okay. And uh, over uh, the last decade or decade and a half, there are have been studies on these uh, finding out the spin current and its magnitude and how to actually enhance this in order to have uh, or rather realize devices which are called as the spintronic devices. And the advantage of the spintronic devices are that uh, they have uh, infinite lifetime that is uh, the spin currents have infinite lifetime they do not dissipate and uh, which we have already talked about. Uh, they do not dissipate and uh, then it can be used or rather the spin current can be used for you know propagation of information which will not have any uh, dissipation uh, in terms of the joule heating or in terms of uh, you know um, scattering from the impurities or disorder. So, this will be a very robust and um, dissipation less transport. Uh, which would be very important uh, and uh, is uh, definitely an improvement over the conventional electronic uh, devices. Okay. And uh, um, as we have said that this uh, dissipation less transport is uh, fundamentally because of the fact that the spin current uh, is uh, invariant under time reversal. Okay. All right. So, uh, this is uh, about the uh, spin current. Now, we uh, have to talk about another uh, important uh, topic which is called as a quantum spin hall effect and uh, of course, we have talked about spin hall effect, but what is a quantum spin hall effect and uh, we will show you some cartoons on that. Uh, but this was uh, around 2005, 6 it they were you know first proposed as a model uh, which would give rise to the spin hall effect and will not have any charge hall effect which means that the system is not uh, subjected to an external magnetic field, uh, but it has spin orbit coupling. So, the usual charge hall effect vanishes and um, the churn number of the system is 0. But however, another invariant stays which uh, uh, or rather another invariant uh, comes up which is non-zero and uh, that will give rise to uh, the, the quantum spin hall effect. In fact, after these uh, 8081 when this uh, quantum uh, hall insulators are uh, discovered uh, 25 years nearly two and a half decades later. Uh, another type of topological insulator which was discovered are these uh, the quantum spin hall uh, materials or quantum spin hall devices. So, initially it came as a theoretician's um, you know proposal that this can be done. In fact, uh, one of the things that we do not discuss here is uh, called as a Ken Milli model. where Kane and Milley, Charlie Kane and F Milley, they had realized that uh, if you take two copies of the Holden model, uh, where uh, this Holden model is actually the, uh, the second neighbor hopping, uh, complex second neighbor hopping in, uh, in a honeycomb lattice or in graphene. Um, if you take two copies of that, uh, one having a flux uh, to be say pi by 2 and another having a flux to be uh, another spin. I mean one spin has a flux of uh, pi by 2 and another spin has a flux of minus pi by 2. And if you superpose them, then you actually regain back uh, the time reversal symmetry that is broken in this uh, Holden model and that is called as a Kane Milli model. And in this uh, system, if you put in a rush bar spin orbit coupling, you will see that the bands actually split band dispersion or the electronic dispersion the band split and uh, there are edge modes that propagate across the Fermi level from the valence to the conduction band. And um, instead of one pair of uh, edge modes that propagate uh, one finds actually two pairs of edge mode uh, one pair for each spin. So, one pair for up spin edge mode and one pair for the down spin edge mode and these are called as a quantum spin hall 
insulators and uh, they very importantly denote another type of or another class of topological insulators one of them being the the quantum hall insulators which we have been talking about. So, in addition to this application oriented um, side of it or face of it, uh, these uh, fundamentally uh, they are also important because uh, this is one additional class of uh, topological insulator that uh, could be realized. And soon after this uh, proposal, there uh, the people uh, led by Molenkamp, etc they actually uh, realize this uh, in physical systems uh, which is what we are going to discuss and they realized it in quantum well super lattice structures formed uh, by the uh, the cdt uh, the cadmium telluride and the mercury telluride uh, systems okay so it's basically a, a mercury telluride uh, which is sandwiched between the cadmium tellurides and beyond a certain uh, width of this structure, uh, the quantum well structure uh, for the mercury telluride, one has a quantum spin hall phase. We will do not very detailed calculation, one can look at uh, these uh, the papers by uh, Barnevi, Hughes and Zhang and uh, also Molenkamp et al. Uh, in order to get more insights into it particularly the experimental aspects I um, will not um, go into details that much, but we will talk about the material. So, let me uh, show you a cartoon of this uh, quantum spin hall insulator. So, you see that this shaded region is a sample and uh, so this formed by as it says uh, some quantum well and a conductance channel for the down spin charge carriers is shown by the red. Uh, you see that the red uh, denotes a down spin and the blue denotes an up spin. So, at uh, each of the transverse edges of the sample that is these two edges which are say respectively right and left, there are instead of one edge mode there are two edge modes at each edge and uh, one corresponds to up spin and the other corresponds to the down spin and so on. Okay. And, um, so, these are shown by this red dots and the blue dots and the spin directions are also shown and uh, these are called as a helical edge modes. Um, so, it is in the quantum hall samples we have seen that there are only one edge modes which are uh, chiral that is they are propagating in different direction. Here at each edge we have uh, two modes. Uh, corresponding to two spins which are uh, pointing in the different I mean their opposite directions. So, it is like a you know a sort of a set of two highways uh, where uh, the red uh, are say the cars moving in one direction and blue the cars moving in the other direction and uh, similarly the other lane of the highway has exactly the same things. Now, of course, this blue moves in the opposite direction. So, if the blue moves in this direction that is up spin moves in this direction on the left edge of the sample, uh, then this would move in this direction in the right direction on the other edge of the sample and similarly this would move uh, the down spin would move say in this right and they would move in the left. So, it is a strange kind of arrangement and they are called as a helical edge modes as opposed to chiral edge modes of quantum hall systems. Okay. Now, this is just a cartoon showing a quantum spin hall phase. Okay. So, uh, let me show another cartoon of uh, these are of course, uh, you see that only one pair because uh, I mean it is not exactly it is just a cartoon picture, but if you calculate the uh, band dispersion for the Kane Milli model uh, without a Rajbar term they look similar and uh, you see the, the conduction band and the valence band uh, these green lines that traverse these are the edge modes one of them a uh, corresponds to the down spin and the other corresponds to the up spin. So, these uh, will give rise to these uh, edge states uh, or edge modes that are present in the system. So, this energy versus momentum and the conduction band is shown in red and the valence band is shown in, in blue and uh, this is a function of the momentum uh, 
um, you could ask this question that uh, this momentum uh, is actually a vector suppose in two dimension it should be a two component quantity that is a two component vector uh, but of course these calculations are done on a nano ribbon which is what I have shown you earlier and uh, in the nano ribbon uh, there is just one k that is uh, a good quantum number the other k is not a good quantum number because there is no translational periodicity or there is translational invariance uh, in the other direction. So, this corresponds to the momentum which uh, has a periodicity or which has you know a periodic boundary conditions and uh, they can be defined uh, uh, as a good quantum number. So, that momentum is being talked about not the other. So, if you have a ribbon along the uh, x direction then this is actually k x the x component is missing here, but it means that x component of the momentum. Okay. So, uh, let me talk about the experiment and uh, before I come to the band structure, let me show you. So, these are you know um, sort of super lattice structure where uh, there is a HGTE uh, inside uh, uh, CDTE uh, cadmium telluride here. So, this is the uh, structure and uh, there is something very interesting about uh, HGTE which is uh, what will be talked about. However, CDTE is a, a well behaved semiconductor. Now, this kind of structure when this thing uh, D crosses some DC that is uh, of the uh, HGT uh, well, this quantum well has a width which is greater than some DC where DC is equal to 6.3 uh, nanometer. Okay? And when it crosses then HGT uh, that is mercury telluride band structure becomes important and this mercury telluride has got a strange band structure and this is what makes it interesting and uh, uh, the system undergoes a band inversion and this band inversion is responsible for the quantum spin hall phase. So, let me uh, show the first uh, non interesting one uh, that is the CDT the cadmium telluride it is a direct band gap semiconductor with uh, delta equal to 1.6 electron volt which is fairly large. So, let me uh, show you this. So, uh, this one is less than that. So, when D is less than DC it is a trivial or band or trivial insulator. For D greater than DC, DC is some uh, critical width uh, which has a value in this particular case as 6.3 nanometer and when D is greater than DC then uh, one has a quantum spin hall, we will write it as QSH insulator. Okay. So, uh, to carry on with the band structure of CDT, one can see that so there are these blue uh, band which is uh, denoted by gamma x here and uh, so this uh, actually is the conduction band. Uh, so, this is conduction band and this gamma 6 band for the CDT uh, has uh, a j uh, equal to half and it corresponds to L equal to 0. Okay? So, L equal to 0 and S equal to half that makes it um, um, this has a property which is like a S is like a S band or S orbital. Okay? Now, gamma 8 corresponds to so this is a valence band and this is for J equal to 3 half. Now, this is L equal to 1 and S equal to half. Okay? Uh, so, this is a, a p orbital okay? and this gamma 7 that you see is uh, separated from this is basically uh, this is the spin orbit uh, splitting. So, it actually has the same symmetry, but uh, this is this uh, correspond to j equal to 3 half and this correspond to j equal to half. Uh, and it is not important for the discussion uh, the only things that are important in this quantum well structure are these uh, gamma 6 band and the gamma 8 band 
and so on. Okay. So, this is a, a sort of a well behaved semiconducting system, its conduction band is uh, above the Fermi level and uh, uh, the <coughs> valence band is below the Fermi level and so on. Okay. This is the most important thing, you see that this is like a zero band gap semiconductor because the gamma 8 level is almost uh, I mean it is touching the Fermi level. So, it is a zero band gap semiconductor and not only that there are uh, interesting consequences here. So, these are valence band okay. and again it is s orbital. Uh, so, it is a s type and so on and uh, this is again that uh, j equal to 3 half. So, this is j equal to 3 half uh, and it is a p orbital. Okay. Now, what happens is that these are the spin orbit coupled uh, or rather split bands okay. and uh, the part of the conduction band. So, this is the conduction band. So, the part of the conduction band is below the uh, valence band and so this is called as an inverted structure and this inverted structure actually uh, is important and um, so gamma 7 and gamma 8 are uh, SO uh, split band and the whole dispersion is shown uh, near this point which is called as the gamma point. So, this is the center of the BZ. Okay. So, this one um, again uh, this corresponds to uh, so S type which means this is equal to j equal to half and so on. So, this of course, is j equal to half because these are spin orbit coupled band and uh, this has an inverted structure and uh, this AGT when it becomes uh, important a dominant player in this quantum well it happens when the thickness or a width of the quantum well exceeds certain value, then the AGT or the Mercury telluride band dispersion becomes more prominent or more important and that is when it uh, becomes a quantum spin hall insulator. Okay. So, um, and these are um, really these super lattices is formed by a molecular beam epitaxy or uh, even probably by uh, sputtering methods and so on. So, uh, this had given idea to people called as uh, Bernevig, Hughes and Zhang and to write down a Hamiltonian uh, and solve it. And that is why it is called as a BHZ model. Okay. So, uh, they wrote down a Hamiltonian and uh, they sort of solved it in order to get the band structure and so on. So, what they did is that they wrote down a 4 by 4 Hamiltonian comprising of um, so this uh, gamma 6 uh, j equal to so these mj values which are plus minus half uh, and uh, gamma 8 bands plus minus half. So, we talk about this by gamma 6 and gamma 8, we uh, talk about the symmetries of the band. This is a s orbital, so it is even uh, and uh, this is a p orbital, so a even means l equal to 0 and this is a p, uh, so this is odd uh, because uh, it is equal to l equal to 1. Just to remind you that uh, even and odd is said uh, in terms of uh, so, what happens uh, to a particular orbital when it is inverted which means that uh, when you change uh, theta to theta plus pi and uh, phi to phi minus pi. Uh, so, uh, the YLM function or the spherical harmonics it picks up a minus 1 whole to the power L. So, when L equal to 0 it does not pick up a sign and when L equal to 1 it picks up a sign that will define that they are whether they are even or odd and that is how they are written and these half etcetera I mean uh, this is the mj uh, the magnetic quantum number of the full uh, the total j quantum number because they are spin orbit coupling. So, we cannot talk about individually about L and S. 
So, one talks about j and j uh, is a good quantum number uh, even though the uh, near the this gamma point uh, k parallel equal to 0 the parallel component of the momentum equal to 0. So, uh, these uh, B H Z wrote down a 4 by 4 Hamiltonian we have seen such 4 by 4 Hamiltonians earlier and uh, in this basis. So, uh, the basis is a gamma uh, 6 up uh, and a gamma 8 up. Uh, gamma 8 up and gamma 6 down and a gamma 8 down and so this is the basis for that 4 by 4 and uh, so there is a gamma 6 up and a gamma uh, 8 um, well, I am not writing anything one should actually write like this and so on and um, uh, gamma 6 down um, and uh, gamma 8 down and so on. Okay. So, uh, one gets a Hamiltonian. So, it is actually a block Hamiltonian with no components uh, mixing the spins. So, this is equal to uh, H of k um, and uh, so 0 uh, and 0 uh, H star of minus k and that gives you an effective Hamiltonian written in this basis. Okay. So, we are just simply modeling the HGT, CDT, the quantum well super lattice structure and uh, taken the bands that are uh, closest to the to the Fermi level and uh, their respective symmetries and, and the spins. Uh, spins are important. Now, these are not pseudo spinners, these are real spins. Uh, in graphene, if you remember that we have talked about Pauli matrices, but they do not uh, really denote the spin degrees of freedom, but here they do. So, uh, we can uh, write down this as, so I will not go into details, but let me write down the Hamiltonian and the Hamiltonian is like a epsilon k and i, i is basically a 2 by 2 matrix. So, this is that and then a Dirac Hamiltonian form, which we have seen earlier for graphene. So, these uh, sigma uh, they denote the Pauli matrices. So, sigma x, sigma y and sigma z and these d vectors can be written as dx plus i dy equal to some constant a into kx plus i ky. So, this is just a low energy Hamiltonian uh, near the gamma point where this uh, uh, Hamiltonian is linearized. So, you see that at the k equal to 0 that is a gamma point in the vicinity of the Fermi energy it is uh, uh, approximated by a linear dispersion. Okay. So, that is why it is a k x plus i k y i will take care of the uh, from it will come from the sigma y and um, so this d dot sigma is called as a, a Dirac Hamiltonian. So, it has a Dirac form plus this uh, 2 by 2 and uh, the d z where d is uh, of course, a function of k where k actually varies from a minus pi to plus pi uh, for both k x and k y. These are the it is basically a two dimensional momentum and uh, this is equal to k x square plus k y square okay? uh, where uh, all these things will will just say in a moment that all these things are constants c minus d. Uh, k x square plus k y square. So, if you put in everything uh, into this equation 1, so let us call this as equation 2. So, if you put 1 in 2, uh, it will have a form which is a 4 by 4 and that can be solved. Uh, even if you have difficulty in solving it by hand, it can always be solved in a using a software such as uh, you know either you use Python or MATLAB, Mathematica, etc. Uh, k is uh, nothing but a two dimensional momentum k x and k y and uh, a uh, m b c d are material dependent constants.
Okay, all right. So uh, they can remain as constants. Um, if you see it, uh, you know dz that goes with sigma z and sigma z has a diagonal structure which is 1 0 uh, 0 minus 1 and so m and b both appear with sigma z and because of this dot product dz sigma z. So, these are called mass terms the ones that appear at the diagonal are called mass terms. So, b is the uh, classical mass because that goes with the k square dispersion and m is actually a Dirac mass. Okay. So, in the absence of B, it will give rise to two copies of the Dirac Hamiltonian in 2 plus 1 D. So, if um, B equal to 0, uh, the Hamiltonian. So, the, the square term vanishes and uh, the second term of equation 1 is truly like a, a Dirac equation. So, Hamiltonian denotes a Dirac. Hamiltonian. In uh, two plus one dimension. Okay, and in fact, um, will be fine if we only consider uh, the edge of the sample. So one can um, uh, deal with the edge Hamiltonian and which will give the edge states which are of importance to us because these edge states will uh, quantify uh, or uh, tell us about the, the quantum spin hall phase. And um, if you do that uh, subject to certain conditions and uh, these conditions are simple in the sense that there are further conditions that can be imposed such as epsilon of k x equal to 0 where which tells you that a c minus d uh, k x square equal to 0. In this condition, let us write down the Schrodinger equation which is h psi equal to e psi with h as this Hamiltonian, this Hamiltonian that you see or h effective so to say, this is that effective Hamiltonian. All right. So, uh, where psi is of course, a two component spinner uh, which is psi up and a psi down and um, uh, both you know psi up and psi down have a 2 by 2 structure. I mean it is a two component spinner each one of them. Okay. So, this psi up is equal to some chi into 0 and psi down this up and this down this is equal to a 0 chi. Okay. And um, uh, let us make an ansatz uh, to solve this ansatz says that so chi is equal to some psi 0 which is some amplitude and exponential lambda x. So, if you put that into this equation Schrodinger equation uh, let us call it as equation 3 um, and let us call this as 4. So, putting 4 in 3. Uh, and along with this condition which we have said this condition uh, this is uh, simplifies things and uh, so this becomes equal to m plus uh, b lambda square uh, sigma z minus i this is i a uh, lambda sigma x and uh, psi 0 e to the power lambda x is equal to 0 of course a psi e 0 exponential lambda x is not equal to 0. So, this has to vanish. So, this is equal to 0 in order to have a non trivial solution of the problem and um, uh, so that uh, can be done. So, this can be solved uh, if you multiply it by uh, sigma x because of the reason that I, I told you this earlier that um, uh, so, a sigma z sigma x will be equal to. So, the anti commutation relation and the commutation relations uh, if you combine then this is equal to some uh, sigma y. So, that is why you multiply it by sigma y So, let me just write down just to help you in, um, in getting this step. So, we have written this earlier. 
that uh, sigma uh, i sigma j. So, uh, sigma z sigma x. So, this is equal to um, 2 i uh, sigma y that is the commutation relation and what is the anti commutation relation? The anti commutation relation says that sigma z sigma x uh, is equal to 0. Okay. So, that is the anti commutation relation. So, uh, sigma z sigma x is minus sigma x sigma z equal to 2 i sigma y and sigma z sigma x plus sigma x sigma z equal to a 0. So, if we add both of them, we have a 2 sigma z sigma x equal to 2 i sigma y. So, this 2 will cancel. So, a sigma z sigma x becomes i sigma y and that is why we uh, multiply these uh, let us call it as 5 by sigma x. So, that I get a sigma y and sigma x square is equal to 1. So, this will be independent of that Pauli matrix and the this one the first term will have a sigma y. So, multiplying by uh, sigma y uh, one gets uh, m plus uh, b lambda square sigma y uh, and uh, psi 0 and uh, minus a lambda psi 0 equal to 0. Now, you see this becomes simple because uh, this now psi 0 is an eigenfunction of um, sigma y which is known. Okay, sigma y can be solved, uh, sigma y has eigenvalues plus minus 1. Uh, so, if you solve for lambda, lambda comes out as uh, 1 over 2 b uh, a plus uh, minus root over a square minus 4 b m. And uh, so, if we uh, you know plot it as a function of k near k equal to 0 etcetera and so on and then this should um, give rise to the similar uh, band dispersion as we have seen for the HGT, CDT and the quantum well structures and um, uh, will of course, the nature of the edge modes will depend upon the specifics of the boundary condition. So, one can actually solve it numerically in order to get the different you know uh, the dispersion uh, of the BHZ model for uh, various choices of uh, A, B, M etcetera and uh, it, it can be plotted uh, in the in the Brillouin zone to get this dispersion and this uh, uh, for uh, you know choices of the parameters there will be uh, the uh, edge modes will occur uh, in the system and for other choices of parameters there will be no edge modes. So, the edge modes um, the ones uh, the corresponding to the parameters that uh, have edge modes will be called as a, a topological uh, system or a quantum spin hall insulator whereas, uh, the ones which do not have edge modes and simply there is a gap um, there is an energy gap in the bulk of the spectrum. Uh, that uh, represents a band insulator. So, this is uh, another study that we have done in, in the family of Hall effects uh, other than the Hall effect that we have uh, done uh, quite rigorously and this uh, Hall effect is called the spin Hall effect and we have talked several times that um, it has uh, significant uh, applications in uh, the spintronic uh, devices. So, if a material has strong spin orbit coupling, uh, then uh, one can actually uh, get these uh, band inversion properties and this band inversion is key to uh, getting this quantum spin hall insulators or this quantum spin hall phases. And here it turns out uh, for a thickness of the Mercury telluride uh, uh, slab to be larger than certain thickness which is 6.3 nanometer one has a dominance of the mercury telluride in the in the overall band structure which is when uh, the, the band inversion occurs and hence that gives rise to a quantum uh, spin hall insulator. And uh, Bernevig, Hughes and Zhang have written down uh, Hamiltonian considering all the symmetries and uh, the low uh, energy properties uh, they wrote down a Hamiltonian which can be solved. And, uh, nature of the eigenvalues uh, and the eigenfunctions can be uh, discussed.
we shall come back to the BHZ model after we look at a theoretical model proposed by uh, Ken and Milley in uh, 2005, which also describes a quantum spin hall insulator. Uh, we shall uh, further establish a connection between the Ken Milley model and the BHZ model that we have uh, looked at. Mm -hmm.